Good morning. This is Eugene May. I am the teacher of Eagles Wings Ministries located in Dover, Florida. And I want to invite you to stay tuned for these next few minutes as we study the word together. The purpose of what I am doing here on this these videos, this video and the and the other videos that I have been doing is to teach some of the things of the Bible and the things concerning our God that maybe you have not heard before. I know I do a lot of teaching on faith. I do a lot of teaching on the Holy Spirit. But in our last teaching, we began talking about God's original intention. And we looked at the fact that God created this earth for himself but also for us. And God wants us to understand that he had us in his heart a long time before the scripture ever began with the words, in the beginning, God. Why are we here? Why are we so important to our God? Some of us have grown up with the attitude that we're not important to God at all, that uh, God was content doing everything else, and then all of a sudden, well, I guess I'll make man. We are not an afterthought. You are not an afterthought. I want us to go to the book of Ephesians today, and we're going to begin and in the book of Ephesians, and we're going to talk about the things that we find in the first part of the first chapter. Of course, the Apostle Paul, beginning in verse 1, introduces himself, and he says, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, to the saints who are in Ephesus and faithful in Christ Jesus, grace to you and peace from our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ, just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love having predestined us to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, by which he made us accepted in the beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace which he made to abound toward us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known to us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth in him. I took the time to read all of those scriptures because I want us to take a look at this particular passage of scripture today. When I think about God's intention for me, when I think about God's intention for you, it goes far beyond the surface far beyond just him blessing us and saving us and filling us with the Holy Spirit. But God had a purpose in everything. I want us to go back and begin to look at verse 3. The first couple of verses in this chapter were the introduction where Paul introduces himself as an apostle, yes. But then in verse 3, he begins to talk about our redemption, all that God has done for us. 
And he starts out by saying, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ. He starts out talking about the who, the center of everything, and that's God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. God wants us to understand that he's the center. Now, one of the things that I love to teach on is who we are in Christ Jesus, because we are his special people. A few Sundays ago, I was speaking in our local church, and I talked about who we are, that we are children of God. But God also wants us to consider ourselves as sons, and that's a position in Christ Jesus. Now, God wants us to understand that everything revolves around God. He is the center of it all. In fact, one of my favorite songs is a very modern song, one that's just written, uh, been written a few years, and that is Jesus at the center of it all. And I believe that that's the way it is, that Jesus is at the center of it all. But God also wants us to understand that you and I have a place in this too. As I explained it to the church a few weeks ago, Jesus is at the center of everything. Absolutely. That's from our side. That's how we look at it. He has to be the center of everything. But God has a side in this thing. You see, God wanted us. I'm probably going to say that again in this teaching this morning. But God wanted us. And from our side, it's all about Jesus, all about our God, all about the Father, all about the Holy Spirit. It's all about God, but from God's side, it's all about human beings like you and like me, because we are the ones that Jesus came for and came to and came to possess as a people on this earth, and we need to understand that, that God loves us, that God himself reached out. And he did something for us that we could never, ever have done for ourselves. <laughs> the first thing was the creation itself, which is impossible for man. You know, uh, <laughs> I read something this past week that that's one of the ultimate uh, failures is for a man to stand in a bucket and reach down and try to lift himself up by the handle on the bucket. Impossible. When I picture that in my mind, it's so ridiculous. But that's how a lot of us <clears throat> think that we have come to the place that we are in life. That we lifted ourselves up by the handle of the bucket that we're standing in. Or we lifted ourselves up by our bootstraps. Now, bootstraps are not things that we have much uh, understanding of anymore, but for the early part of my life, and even now, I wore cowboy boots. And uh, that was just the way that we were raised. That's the way that uh, we conducted our lives. We, and, and to get those boots on, you had to reach down and you had to pull them up by the straps at the top. Now, I'm saying that, yes, and I hope that you understand that I'm saying it in a way to cause you to understand. But God wants you to realize that you are not here just because you decided to be here. Not just because your mom and dad decided to be here. Or they decided for you to be here. You're here because of God. And 
He chose us. You see, God's the who. The what was this. He chose us. He chose us. He picked us out as sons and daughters. In fact, the Bible, and I don't want to get ahead of myself too far here, but the Bible teaches us that we were literally chosen in him from the foundation of the world. And that's exactly what I'm going to read here in just a moment. But I want you to understand today that you were here because God made the decision for you to be born. But he made it a long, long time before you were ever thought of. When God talks about Abraham, he talks about his seed coming forth. He talks about that the people were in the bosom of Abraham as seed generations before they were ever born. And that's amazing to me. My little mind cannot absorb some of those things at times because it's amazing that we would find ourselves many thousands of years in the heart of God. Let's read it. In verse 4, it literally tells us here in Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 4 that he chose us in him before the foundation of the world. He chose us in whom? In him, in Jesus Christ, before the foundation of the world. God looked down, and, I, you know, I don't know all of the logistics of this. I'm just reading what the Word says. I don't know how God did it. I don't know how God does anything. That's why it's a mystery to us. But the Word says, He chose us in Him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before Him in love. Wow. That is amazing to me that God looked down the centuries before the foundation of the world, before this earth ever existed, before the creation as we know it ever came into being. And he says, I want you. In our uh, history here in the United States, we have a character we call Uncle Sam. Uncle Sam represented the government represented the union of the states. And uh, this cartoon came out at World War I, which was uh, over 100 years ago now. And the character shows Uncle Sam dressed in his red, white, and blue with his finger pointed. And the way they created that, they created it as you walked by the poster, it was as the finger followed you. And it says, I want you. That's how God has created us with his desire because he wants us. And so I, I, I think about that cartoon sometimes about how God Long time before anyone ever sat down and designed that cartoon, God said, I want you. And he pointed his finger at us. We were chosen by God. The what here is God. The who is God choosing us choosing us as his sons and daughters and his family. But how did he do it? How did he do it? A lot of us think that 2,000 plus years ago that Jesus was first acknowledged, first brought into the world. 
Well, he was by birth. But I want to tell you, that Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior, was in the very presence of God and a part of the Godhead a long time before he ever came through the virgin birth to Mary over 2,000 years ago. In fact, the Bible teaches us that we were in him. There's a little preposition, and I've talked about this before, and I, and I feel that, that it is something that I need to explain here again today. But there's a little preposition. You know what a preposition is in our language? A preposition is a word that locates us. And this little preposition in our English language, and also in French and in Spanish and, and in other Romance languages, and then uh, in every language on the earth, they have this preposition. It may not be pronounced or even spelled anything like it is here in our English language. It's the preposition in, I, in. In some languages, it's E, in. But I want to tell you what it is. It is a preposition that locates you. It puts you in Christ Jesus. That's how he did it. He put us in Christ Jesus. And in this passage of scripture that I read to you at the beginning of our teaching today, in verses 3 and 5 and 6 and 7 and 10, all of those verses, you have this little preposition repeated many, many times. Here in verse 4, it says, he chose us in him before the foundation of the world. Wow. In him. That means that not only was Jesus in the heart of God and, and a part of the Godhead before the foundation of the world, before anything was ever created, but you and I were in the heart of God before this creation was ever created. And you see, Jesus Christ was the eternal Son of God. He didn't just come into existence 2,000 years ago. He was in the plan of God. He was the eternal Son of God and involved in everything. He was involved in the creation. In the book of Genesis where it says, let us make man in our image. You see, we have a triune God. You say, I, I don't know how to explain that. I don't either. I've heard all kinds of explanations all of my life. None of, none of them ever satisfy me. Because it's almost impossible. And I think it really is impossible for all of us. Not just almost impossible. It really is impossible for us to comprehend that triune God. God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. But Jesus was there in creation. He was a part of everything, the eternal Son, Son of God, in everything. And you and I are in Him. I want to go back to verse 4 just for a moment. It says, just as He chose us in Him, chose us in him when? Before the foundation of the world. Who? God. What did he do? He chose us. How did he do it? He put us in him, in Christ Jesus. And so that's where we are. We are in him. It's as if we were encapsulated inside of Jesus Christ. Now, when did he do it? Before the foundation of the world. This is something that still boggles my mind. Before the foundation of the world, God looked down here and chose you. He chose me. 
when I even think about that, it causes me to glorify God. Not glorify myself, but to glorify God. Because it says before the foundation of the world, he chose me. He chose you. He looked down through the centuries and said, I want this guy who will become Eugene May. I want him as mine. And he put me in Christ Jesus in his heart all the way back there. But there had to be a day. And there was that day over I have to stop and think about it because it's over 72, almost 73 years ago that I made a choice, that I said, Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sin and come into my heart. I had to do that, but I was chosen in him. And the mystery of that is something that I don't think we will ever understand. But why did he do it? Why did he do this? God did it. What did he do? He chose us. How did he do it? He chose us in him, in Christ Jesus. And when did he do it? Before the foundation of the world. But why did he do it? Verse 5 says, for himself. In verse 5, it says, having predestined us to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will. Do you know what God is saying to us? He's saying before the foundation of this world, I chose you because I took pleasure in you. I like what I saw in you. I like what I created in you. In fact, I think if God was sitting here with me today as I'm doing this, he would say, I like you. Because what he did was, he chose us for himself as his own special people, for his own good pleasure, for his own glory, for his own satisfaction. This is how much God cares about you. This is how much God loves you. Now, I want us to go back to verse 4 just for a moment. Now, I could take you all the way through verse 10. We read all the way through verse 10 at the beginning. And I could show you all of those prepositions, the I and the, the word in, and I could talk to you more and more about that. But I want to go back to verse 4 just for a moment. It says, he chose us in him. That's our location. Now, I've already said that today. I've already said that that little preposition locates us. It locates our position. But that's where we are. God wants us to understand that our location is in Christ Jesus, ultimately in God the Father already. That's really our dwelling place. Now, there is a day that we are going to heaven, that we're going to be with God. And Eugene forgot to turn off his cell phone this morning. Hallelujah. Well, I'm not going to re-record this. God wants us to understand that we are in him. That's where we're going to be forever. Yeah, we're going to heaven one day. There'll be a day that we will go to be with him. There will be a day that we will say, I'm home. But God wants you to understand this now that we are already home. We are in Christ Jesus now. And we'll just change locations 
in eternity. You see, that's good news for me. That's good news for you. And I hope you can receive it today. And I encourage you to look at yourself and say, I was God's original intention. I am a part of a people that God chose for himself in Christ Jesus before the foundation of the world. That's really who you are. And God wants you to understand it, and he wants you to live it. Father, I want to thank you for your word today. And I thank you that you are blessing us with all spiritual blessings in Christ Jesus. And Lord, thank you. Thank you for doing it. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, I want to encourage you that if you appreciate these broadcasts and you want to help us pay the freight, you can go to Eugene May at eugenemay.org at PayPal, and we would, we would appreciate your support concerning these videos and the other things that we do in missions around the world. But God wants you to understand one thing, and I want you to understand this too. Our dependence is upon God and Him alone. God bless you. Have a wonderful day, and we'll see you next week. Bye-bye.